Well, All I can say is just, this meeting is being recorded. Yeah. Open the meeting. Good evening, uh, Joe Parisi, Director of Public Works. Um, I'd like to start out uh, tonight with a brief uh, overview of where we've been, uh, where the town has been for the, uh, I guess, past year or so now. And, uh, and then we'll get into some more detailed information uh, from our consultants at Kleinfelder, talking about the, uh, the wastewater, um, municipal wastewater system and uh, the associated financing of that project. So just taking us through this a little bit. So briefly, uh, in October 2021, the town meeting approved an appropriation of $2,893,000 to advance the design, permitting, and development of the um, full funding plan for a wastewater collection system to service Main Street, North Street, West through Lowell Road, and Park Street West through Concord Street. This work represents phase one of the wastewater project in North Reading. Phase two would encompass Martin's Pond, specifically the area bounded by Main Street, both sides of Burroughs Road, Wilmington Town Line, and the Andover Town Line. While flows required to service this area is kind of coming from the planning assumptions, neither construction plans nor growth projections were part of the work that we did this past year. So the town contractor would write Pierce to provide preliminary design for the proposed municipal wastewater system and for a final design of a portion of the system located within the Mass DOT project area at routes of 125 and routes 114 intersection where Mass DOT is designing for a, a drainage improvement and roadway resurfacing project. So the town is designing a system for wastewater flows of 503,000 gallons per day to accommodate both the phase one and the phase two needs in these areas as well as some uh, future new growth needs. So the town is also contracted with Kleinfeld to perform a municipal wastewater financial assessment study on the options of financing the estimated project cost of the uh, wastewater system, including the growth projections. So a detailed presentation of this information will follow. So what about the route? So discussions with the Andover and North Andover have been ongoing. The intended route to convey the wastewater via Force Main um, to the Greater Lawn Sanitary District, or the GLSD, wastewater treatment plant located in North Andover, is to follow Route 28 to Route 125 to Route 114. Andover and North Andover encouraged the town to look at other options for a route from slightly south of Route 125 intersection with Route 114 to the GLSD. So discussions continue with the two communities regarding the best route to connect to the GLSD from this area, including potential use of existing gravity sewer line routes that could be upgraded in their communities. So <clears throat> here's a little map of the routes. Uh, the, map, the, the route uh, in red, shown in red, uh, 28 to 125 to 114, all the way into Lawrence, takes us into an a interceptor pipe that was constructed by Andover, um, and we would get to the GLSD from there through existing pipes that lead to the GLSD that's in that green uh, rectangle to the far right. So another route is, uh, you know, before getting onto 114, could go through Andover and into their collection system, shown in brown on the left-hand side. That goes through their, uh, through their local uh, systems, and it, it gets uh, ultimately into the uh, pump station uh, that they have um, <clears throat> that will lead to the same interceptor that I mentioned in Lawrence. The next route, or another route, is uh, in North Andover, shown in green, and that, again, um, slightly into 114, will make its way into their, their collection system, gravity collection system, and take another route 
you know, into some existing pipe shown in purple that also leads to the GLSD. So there's a few routes there to consider. In tile collection systems, so there's um, generally a, a combination of uh, grinding lines and some force mains and pump stations, eight. Total uh, pump stations you'll see here, seven shown in town, and there's one in Andover on 125 as well. Uh, but the collection system here would uh, be along routes 28, also a section of North Street leading down to a section of Lowell Road, uh, Park Street, and Concord Street. It ends pretty much at the uh, Wellington Town Line. So those uh, pump stations will, uh, will receive the, uh, the gravity flow to them and then pump through uh, force mains all the way back to the uh, GLSD plant in North Andover. So the total wastewater design permitting flow capacity being sought is 503,000 gallons per day. So that flow would be reduced by existing phase one wastewater flow allocation of 186,000 gallons per day. This is looking at existing water use. Reduced by phase two mountains pond wastewater flow reserve of uh, 32,000 gallons per day. Again, reduced by groundwater infiltration allowance of 29,300 gallons per day and also reduced by a 10% safety factor for above allocations and reserves of 21,800 gallons per day. So this results in a projected available wastewater flow for future new growth of 233,900 gallons per day. So the number could vary, particularly if some users in phase one and two would like not to connect to the system. So back in 2021, the final design and construction probable cost estimate uh, after um, appropriating the 2,893 was 113,012. See that down the far right, lower. So uh, updating for today's costs of inflation and also some design uh, advancements. We have you know the 113 in the, in the uh, far left column. The new uh, probable costs in 2022 is 129,000,000.1, a difference of $16.09 million for those various line items shown there. So do we have the bonding capacity to borrow the funds needed to construct the sewer project? So the town's general debt limit consists of normal debt limit and a double debt limit. The normal debt limit is 5% of the valuation of taxable property as last equalized by the State Department of Revenue the town can authorize debt up to the amount without state approval. It can authorize debt up to twice this amount, the double debt limit, with the approval of the state municipal finance oversight board, composed of the state treasurer, the state auditor, and the attorney general and director of accounts. So there are many categories of general obligation debt which are exempt from and do not count towards the debt, the general debt limit. And among others, these exempt categories include certain school bonds, self-supporting sewer bonds, water bonds, bonds for electric gas and community antenna television systems and telecommunication system bonds, solid waste disposal facility bonds. So the town's current debt limit is $180 million, plus or minus, with state approval. The debt limit can be raised to $360 million, 766. The outstanding debt and debt authorized by, but not yet issued, subject to the debt limit is 15,077,000. Leaving additional borrowing capacity of 165,306,000 under the normal debt limit and 345,689,000 under the double debt limit. The bottom line is that the town has ample capacity under the statutory debt limits to authorize future capital projects that are subject to the debt limits. However, this capacity should be should not be confused with the town's ability to support the payment of additional debt service within the town's prop two and a half levy limit or the need for additional revenues, betterment assessment revenues or debt exclusion revenues to fund the project. <coughs> so a little, bit, a little bit about the financial, financial assessment study. As I said, we'll have more information following uh, my presentation here, but it's broken up into two parts. Part one being the municipal wastewater system cost and financing analysis. So in that part, you'll see there was a GIS mapping of the proposed municipal wastewater service areas. Um, you know, some analysis of 
analysis of a three-year average water use. And I think we also did you know, a five-year average. Uh, confirm the adequacy of the 503,000 gallons per day annual sewer discharge. Provide a summary of betterment assessment methods, how to share the cost with betterment assessments. Develop a wastewater system project financing model, including the use of sewer betterments, uh, debt exclusion revenues, grants, other special <coughs> revenues. Assist with draft sewer betterment assessment bylaws for town meeting adoption, which was completed. And uh, presentation of part one uh, cost financial information, which we are doing as we speak. In part two, it's property valuation and new growth analysis, so perform a potential build out analysis. Conduct public outreach and solicit survey data from property owners' businesses. Develop a matrix of potential property development. Recommend zoning changes, regulation changes, if uh, any, that may be needed to optimize desired development. Evaluate potential real estate market value increases and new growth tax dollars. Calculate the return on investment over a 30-year debt service uh, payment plan period. Provide public outreach meeting assistance during outreach meetings with property owners, businesses, and with the general public. And presentation of part two information as we are here again tonight. So that is it. Um, I am happy to uh, present Kleinfelder, our consultants who uh, have gone through part one and part two, uh, have put that data in um, you know, spreadsheets and, and presentation slides. So. Uh, I will let them now introduce themselves and, and take it from here. And let's see. Thanks, Joe. Um, I'm Adria Fichter. I'm a project engineer with Kleinfelder. Um, some of you heard from me way back in July on the scope of this project. So we're back again today to kind of um, give you a summary of our work. Cecilia Carmona is the project manager. She will be joining us uh, momentarily. Megan Patton is the lead on the betterment calculations, and she has recorded um, this presentation for us. And so some of you may have heard this at the select board meeting or at the workshop already. We also have Frank from FXM, and Frank will ask you to introduce yourself just in, in just a second. So the plan is for me to um, play the presentation and then you know, field your questions. The slides are numbered, so if you have a question on a particular slide, please just note that number and we can refer back to it. Um, and I will start sharing my screen, but while I'm doing that, Frank, maybe you could give a, just a quick, quick intro. Yes, I'm uh, Frank Mahady, Principal of FXM Associates. We looked at uh, potential growth with sewer um, in detail from a market standpoint, comparing North Reading's historical growth and projected future growth. Uh, with and without sewer, uh, and from that derived an estimate of potential net new revenues not subject to the Proposition 2.5 uh, limitation. And we have we produced two um, technical reports, which some of, not all of you, have seen copies of, and I'm prepared to answer any questions you may have on them or um, Kleinfelder's presentation. Thanks, Frank. Um, I'm, so I'm going to start the presentation, the recording now. So if anyone, if there's any issue with the sound, please just speak up and I'll try and do some finagling on my part. Presentations will be divided into three parts. The first will review objectives and background. The second will focus on betterments and the betterment determination process. And the third will dive into debt planning, potential new growth analysis, and return on investment. The information presented today is based on a universal base model, which assumes a $132 million total project cost, $129.1 million of which has not yet been allocated. Additional assumptions are highlighted in the blue box on your right. Throughout the presentation, we will give a variety of scenarios that show how these numbers can change based on different model inputs which includes several decision points on the town must make outlined in the orange box on your left. Our objective is to provide general insight into how different scenarios can play out to help the town make informed decisions as they move forward in the sewering process. We'll begin by presenting the numbers up front and then work backwards to show you where these numbers came from and how they can change. The universal base model uses historical water use to determine betterments 
and assume $69 billion of the total project cost will be assigned as betterments to parcels within the Phase 1 sewer district. All single-family homes are assigned the same betterment, while commercial and industrial users are assigned a betterment based on their historical water use. If paid up front, the model approximates a $46,000 betterment to single-family homes and $35,000 betterment to condo owners. This translates into an average monthly cost if paid over 30 years at a 5% interest rate of approximately $250 for single-family homes and $190 for sewered condo owners. There is a range of costs associated with mixed-use commercial and industrial users based on their historical water use. For the remaining $63 million not assessed as betterments, we evaluated how this could impact the general fund. Under the conditions given, the remaining $63 million equates to an average annual tax increase of $0.96 cents per $1,000 evaluation, or approximately $660 a year for the average single-family home. Keep in mind this cost can be reduced through alternative funding sources, which are not evaluated in this model. This is a relatively low number compared to the financial benefits we will present later. For reference, the historical tax rates over the last 20 years fluctuated between $11 and $17 per $1,000 evaluation. With these numbers in mind, we will show you now how they were determined and what this means for you. Why do we need public sewers in the first place? As a reminder, there are several benefits of municipal sewers, including economic and resi residential growth, as well as to improve public health and protect the environment from the impacts of failed septic systems. We will touch on the economic growth and housing potentials in part three of this presentation. Additional resources will be made available on the town's website. The financial assessment we are presenting today explores the long-term financing of the proposed sewer project. This study does not evaluate cash flow, but is meant to identify what funding mechanisms will look like over the life of the loan and what financial benefits the town may see from building sewers. Part one was conducted by Kleinfelder and includes GIS mapping, water usage analysis, wastewater capacity analysis, and the betterment assessments we will discuss today. Part two was conducted by our subconsultant, FXM, and includes the property valuation and new growth analysis, including build-out analysis, zoning recommendations, and evaluating potential new growth revenue. For our analysis, we are focusing on the parcels highlighted here in pink. Before going into those details, some general definitions to get everyone up to speed. A betterment is a special property tax assessed to parcels that receive a benefit or advantage from the construction of a public improvement. In this case, all parcels abutting the proposed sewer main will be assessed a betterment. Betterment can be broken down into identifying general benefit facilities, such as pumping stations and force mains, versus special benefits, such as mains serving a specific population. This will come up again when we go over cost allocations. <clears throat> it is also important to note that a betterment is a municipal lien on a property. This lien can be paid at the time of assessment or over the length of the bonding period, but it must be paid in full when the property is sold. Ultimately, a town meeting and vote must occur to create a betterment. During this meeting, the betterment vote must decide on the following issues. First, the authorization to borrow money for the project. Second, the amount of construction costs to be collected through betterments. Third, the method to assess betterments. And fourth, the interest surcharge to be added by the town, which is allowed to be up to 2% over the borrowing interest rate. We will focus now on the first three decision points to be made by the town, project cost allocations, betterment methodology, loan period, and interest rate. The cost used to determine betterment assessments is based on a portion of the total eligible cost of the project. Select board will vote to determine the division of costs, and final betterments will be determined upon completion of the project once costs are finalized. Now we will take a closer look at how the costs are distributed under our base model assumptions. $129.1 million 
of the total project costs are considered eligible for the betterment assessments, as $2.893 million has already been allocated. Other revenue sources can be applied upfront or used to cover general fund obligations over time. As I mentioned earlier, eligible costs to be assessed may be divided into general benefit facilities and special benefit facilities. General benefit facilities include wastewater conveyance and connection to the Greater Lawrence Sanitary District, as well as land acquisition and administrative fees. From there, the general benefit facilities cost is divided based on anticipated sewer demand, 40% of which is estimated for phase one and 60%, which is reserved for future connections. When you add special benefits to the general benefits to be assessed as betterments, this totals approximately $69 million, of which there are exempt costs and collectible costs. Here, there are three town, state, or federally owned parcels within the project area, which cannot be collected as betterments. These exempt parcels account for $0.4 million of the betterment share. The final betterment will be determined following the betterment determination process. This includes several decision points along the way, including establishing alternative revenue sources, determining eligible project costs, determining the cost distribution between general and special benefits, assigning a portion of general benefit facility costs to be assessed as betterments, selecting a betterment methodology, and calculating final betterments once project costs are finalized. These decision points will impact the general fund obligation as well as the residential and commercial and industrial betterments. For example, an increase in alternative revenue sources will decrease the obligation to all three while a decrease in project costs to be assessed as betterments will increase the application to the general fund while decreasing the betterments to residential and commercial users within the first project area. Decreasing special benefits and decreasing percent general benefits to be assessed as betterments follows the same pattern. Next, we will take a dive into the betterment assessment methodology go through an example betterment calculation and to review the betterment determination process. Based on Mass General Law, we will be using the unit uniform method, which is based on dividing costs between existing and potential residential equivalent sewer units based on existing zoning. Or, to put it simply, flow from a single family residential home is equivalent to one sewer unit. <coughs> Equivalent sewer units are based on estimated wastewater contribution. We looked at three methods to determine what wastewater contribution might be expected. Water use method, Title V current build method, and Title V full build out method. Of these, we found the first two most applicable to the town of North Reading. From these methods, the cost per sewer unit is ultimately determined as the total betterment assessment cost divided by the total number of sewer units. Here we will look at an example parcel and use the first two methods to determine its number of equivalent sewer units. For this example, we have one water account, including a highway business office space with 10 units inside of the building on a lot of 43,560 square feet with an existing building size of 15,000 square feet. For the water use method, the number of sewer units is equal to the water use divided by the equivalent sewer unit flow. In this case, based on historical water use in the town of North Reading, 130 gallons per day is the average single family home water use. So for this parcel, assuming they use 415 gallons per day, their number of sewer units would become three. The Title V current build method is a little more complicated in that it looks at the potential build out of the existing footprint of the parcel building. For this, the number of sewer units is equivalent to the existing building area times the projected Title V flow divided by the equivalent sewer units. In this case, the equivalent sewer units is 330 gallons per day 
which is the average single-family home use projected by Title V. For our example parcel, we have a 15,000 square foot building divided by 1,000 square feet times the projected 75 gallons per day for an office space divided by the 330 gallons per day equivalent sewer units resulting in 3.5 sewer units for this parcel. As a reminder, we will continue to use the base model assumptions throughout this presentation, which is based off the water use method. A 30-year loan period, 5% interest rate, and no residential opt-out. To compare the two methodologies, let's look at the distribution of parcels under current zoning. Currently in the project area, approximately 80% of the parcels are residential, 1% mixed use, 13% commercial, 4% industrial, and 0.2% exempt. Compare this to the estimated betterment distribution by type. The water use method is highlighted in blue where 61% is taken up by residential, 22% by commercial, and 6% by industrial. Under the Title V current bill method, this drops down to 56% for residential, increases to 28% for commercial, and stays about the same as 6% for industrial users. Here is that same information presented in a slightly different way. As you can see, method choice has a slight impact on how the betterment costs are distributed. This takes us back to our first couple of slides where we look at the water use method in particular for our universal base model. Again, this equates to approximately $46,000 for the single family home, $35,000 for condom owners, and a range of costs based on historical water use for commercial, industrial, and mixed use properties. If paid over the life of the loan, this equates to $250 for single-family homes, $190 for condo owners, and a range of values based on water use for all other parcel types. With that, we will move on to part three of our agenda, where we will evaluate debt planning, property valuation, new growth analysis, and return on investment. This part of the presentation looks at the last four decision points to be made by the town. A residential opt-out option, allowable residential and commercial growth, tax rate adjustments, and other revenue sources. What is a residential opt-out? It goes back to how the costs are divided on our project cost allocation flowchart. With the residential opt-out, residents in the sewer district would not be required to pay a benefit until the time they decide to connect into the system. This shifts more of the initial project cost onto the general fund. With no residential opt-out, as we discussed earlier in the presentation, the average residential annual tax increase is approximately $660. This assumes all betterments are paid over 30 years at a 5% interest rate and no alternative revenues are applied. Under those same assumptions, here we compare the different variations of residential opt-out and how that impacts the average annual residential tax increase. So at no opt-out, we have $660 per year. At 25% opt-out, $760 per year. 50% opt-out, $880 per year. And at 100% opt-out in the phase one sewer area would be $1,080 per year. These are approximate estimates based on the given conditions and would change over time as more users connect to the system. So what does that mean for non-sewered residents? Here we show that based on the percentage of residential opt-out, the average monthly tax increase can range from $55 to $90 a month, while the total annual cost ranges from $660 to $1,080 based on the percentage of opt-out. For sewered residents, the total monthly costs come to $305, which includes the average monthly tax increase plus the monthly betterment cost at 0% residential opt-out, totaling an annual cost of approximately $3,660. At 100% residential opt-out, 
If a user would like to tie in, this equates to $340 per month, or $4,080 per year. Now we will take a closer look at the economic benefits of sewer. This is part two of the financial assessment, which includes property valuation and potential new growth analysis. FXM, a subconsultant of Kleinfelder, was provided a scope to answer the question, what is the potential new growth? and what are the potential financial benefits related to this growth. FXM projected commercial, industrial, and multifamily residential growth in the sewer district based on projected demand in surrounding sewer towns, such as Andover, North Andover, and Reading. Based on their assumptions of a constant tax rate of $15 per $1,000 evaluation, they concluded that there is sufficient demand within the market area to absorb the projected commercial square footage potential, as well as the number of units projected for multifamily housing. On the left-hand side, you will see a summary of findings for commercial and industrial properties. From FXM's projection, the potential increase in value of existing properties is approximately $190 million. The potential net new growth between 2026 and 2056 is approximated at 2.6 million square feet, or $902.5 million in property values, resulting in $13.5 million in tax revenues at a $15 per $1,000 evaluation. On the right-hand side, we look at the multifamily residential property findings, including a potential net new growth of approximately 1,300 units for a property valuation of $698.6 million, or $10.5 million in tax revenue, at $15 per $1,000 evaluation. We will use these projections to estimate the return on investment. Return on investment is equated as the dollars returned to a community divided by the dollars invested in the project. The goal is to have dollars returned greater than or equal to the dollars invested. There are several mechanisms available to help with debt repayment. This includes betterments, existing property value increase tax levy, residential new growth tax levy, commercial new growth tax levy, and any additional revenues that the town finds. To avoid increasing general tax rates, the town can look into means to increase the dollars in or decrease the dollars out. For our return on investment analysis, we looked at the $132 million total project cost with $69 million assessed as betterments under the water use method, applying a 30-year loan repayment period from 2027 to 2057 at a 5% interest rate. Projected new growth was evenly distributed over 30 years and there was 0% residential opt-out factored in. The starting tax rate was $15 per year for $1,000 evaluation, plus a prop 2.5 increase to prior year tax levy on commercial new growth. No alternative revenues, including grants and land sales, were included in this determination. Based on FXM's projections, if the town absorbs 100% of the potential commercial and 100% of the potential residential net new growth, the total sewer-related tax revenues over 30 years would be approximately $441 million, or an ROI of 3.3. Revenues and other percentages of growth are shown here with a break-even point for dollars returned over dollars invested at approximately 35% of the potential commercial growth and 35% of the potential residential growth. Further discussion on the types of new growth that the town may see is presented in FXM's report that will be included on the town's website. As a reminder, financial planning is a balancing act. The town must consider the burden on the general fund, residents in the sewer district, as well as commercial and industrial users in the sewer district. They must also consider the borrowing rates and impact on bond rating, as well as the types of new growth that the town would like to see. For additional information, please refer to the town's website at the new sewer information page. You may also join us at one of the workshops listed below.
All right, that's the full recording, everyone. <clears throat> So um, there's a lot of information there, but um, you know, I think you know, we'd be more than happy to have any questions or take any questions you have. Or yeah. uh, the question on the, on the um, 503,000 gallons a day that you projected, is that basically all just the commercial properties? In other words, what, you know, many years ago we did a matrix uh, in the town of, of needs and, and uh, um, based on uh, places that had high water table and ledge and things like that, and we included a lot of Burnett Road in, in that, that area uh, uh, because it was a, um, any of the systems that went in there were going to be like five, eight feet tall for kind of like it. So, so are any, were there any residential uh, properties included in that 503,000? So, so there is. It may not be exactly the same as, you know, what was uh, looked at back then. Um, as the slide showed, the information that was presented was a focus on um, you know, the, the, the Main Street, mm -hmm. uh, Concord Street, or Park Street, Concord Street, going to this residential on Park Street, mm -hmm. um, but also North Street to Lowell Road, and there's residential there as well. But the phase two was the Martins Pond area, a tight you know, area around Martins Pond um, that would <clears throat> you know, be I guess where the greatest need would be for, mm -hmm. for that. Was there was there any discussion about limiting the amount of? Because a lot of the house on the pond are real small, and you put sewer in them, and they could uh, expand rather rapidly. Uh, was there any limits or uh, any discussion of limits putting on the amount of expansion? Are you talking about residential properties? Yeah, the residential, especially the pond area. Well, existing single-family uh, properties, you know, no, there would not be, you know, any. That I'm aware of any existing limitations other than, you know, by the zoning and building codes. Yeah. Okay. That might be something we should, we would want to consider because you could uh, uh, use up a lot of capacity if uh, one bedroom home into a four bedroom home. So. Right. I mean, that that's a future phase, and I think, you know, you'll have certain um, time, you have time, I think, to yeah. sort of consider what that means. I think going forward, you probably have to really keep a, an eye on and a measure of, you know, the capacity you have and what allocations you want that capacity, type of property you should want that capacity to go to, you know. But, but certainly, as we presented in the slides, there's, there's a, a good number of uh, gallons per day still available for new growth based on the current, you know, what we see as the current water use of the properties in the, in the project area. Okay, thank you. Anything else, David? Yeah, are there, I didn't know there's any mention of grants that are out there with the state. Like, is, is there any assumption of grants that we're going to be receiving so, or could be receiving? We, we wanted to show worst case. I don't right. know if you have any comments on that. But what we are uh, looking at and, and what is typically available for these types of projects is um, what's called uh, SRF funding for, you know, for projects like this, it would offer a lower interest rate than what the market perhaps would yield. Is so, there any indication where that's at Mike right now with rates going, you know, skyrocketing up a week, maybe landing at five, you know, by the time this is up? Well, that's what we're rate. showing as, as our projections, uh, as a five so, year, 5% five interest rate so of five years. years. So five yeah. dollars with that, with that, Grant that you mentioned, or that? Well, no, typically, you know, they, they say that an um, SRF grant would be more than 2%. Right. Mm -hmm. And there might be some fees associated with that, so maybe not pure 2%. But do you think that's achievable right now, given where it's the climate with the basis? We, we have an application submitted for it. Okay. And so we you know, hope to have a uh, continuing opportunity there to seek that. Yes. Could I just add to that too? Uh, can, are you guys taking me up for the audio? All right. Well, uh, for the record, Michael Gilbert, Town Administrator. So, you know, there, I, I'm kind of looking at it with Joe. That we have four buckets of potential um, funding other than what you saw on the display here, which is the betterment and tax implication. So, the first is um, the SRF program, which uh, you, know, you mentioned. And I, I think, honestly, Three years ago, five, seven, nine years ago, even we may not have even been 
considering the SRF program because of where the interest rates were at. But now, because of what's going on in the economy, um, we're, we're being guided in that direction. We have the application pending. And the good news is where that used to be almost exclusively a loan program, they've actually added a grant component to it. So that's a newer component um, that really got our interest along with the interest rates. So uh, our consultant right here is working on that. But you know, to be clear, we did not take credit, if you will, for any of that in the presentation you saw here. You know, the select board members, particularly Mr. Sudo and Mr. O'Leary, really felt we needed to show a really conservative approach for the cost. And anything that we can generate that reduces that cost would obviously play favorably for, for the community. So that's one grant source. The second is the state mass works uh, funding program, which I think this board is pretty familiar with. Um, the key to that is having a private partner that's looking to develop um, a, a parcel of land uh, along the route. We had that happen with Cold Day. They were our private partner for a $3 million water grant. So we demonstrated we're able to compete for those grants. Um, for this project, you know, I think we're hopeful that it would be for a dollar amount more than what I just described at $3 million. If we could get closer to that $10 million amount, I think we'd be really happy. But it's a competitive grant program, and there's a lot of infrastructure construction going on right now in the um, in the, in the state. So that's a second sort of you know non-traditional grant funding source. The third is uh, an application that we have pending uh, through Congressman Moulton's office for some funding that would cover the final design portion, which is uh, pretty far along in the process, but has not been um, contracted for at this point. And that's uh, what could be uh, 1.5 million dollars to reduce the um, design costs. So again, you know, we're chipping away at it with that, you know, with, the, with that dollar amount, but uh, it was something that the Congressman put forth and I think we're optimistic to get funded. So that's a third category that, that's out there specifically. The fourth is sort of a catch-all. Whatever else comes up that we find as we go through this process that we say, hey, we can compete for that. It could be a small business administration type grant. It could be, you know, a, a special um, you know, transportation oriented grant to address the situation on Main Street that could be tied into this. It just it really depends upon what's out there. Um, but we do think we're, we're, we're looking at doing this project at the right time in terms of available funding sources because there's a lot of money flowing to, from the federal government as you all know. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, just had one other follow up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that was great, Michael. Um, is what kind of makes me nervous a little bit is, and, and tell me, Joe, if my numbers are not wrong, but it mentioned in, in the report, there's 80% of the parcels along the, this route, this proposed route, are residential. Is that correct? So uh, there are a number of condo units, as you're aware of, along so it's counting kind of. Yeah, so you're counting each people. unit as a, yes, as a, okay. a number, if you will. So yeah, that's why to your yeah. Yeah. Correct. I guess I guess what concerns me, and it would just be perhaps initially because with this with sewer coming in, it's it's really the job of maybe this this group here to change zoning and make it more uh, you know open it up for multi and all different mixed use and stuff. But is that first kind of opt out wave that you might get? <clears throat> so I foresee. And again, you know, I just foresee a high opt out with people that perhaps have you know, new septic systems, really don't care to connect to it. And I do understand the way it was, you know, the betterment was attached to anybody along the route. I mean, that's the only fair way to do it. But I, did, I, mean, I worry about that initial opt out until there's zoning to support and enforce that turnover, perhaps, of highest use. Uh, mixed use all different kinds of zoning that would then benefit more from sewer than just that single family um, you know that's already on sewer a septic and maybe a new septic too right i mean there was that opt-out and, and i think that um you know there'll be situations where properties that have you know, well-functioning septic systems will, will not want to pay right now uh, perhaps you know later down the road they will uh, there's it's a limited capacity project you know, we have the 503,000 gallons you know, per day as a permanent number. Our, our infrastructure is pretty much geared for that. And so it's going to be, you know, managing, you know, whatever reserve capacity we have and decisions made on zoning changes to promote certain, certain growth. Uh, we didn't touch um, too much on the actual details of, of the um, market analysis, but you know, there's certain, you know, commercial growth projected and certain, you know, residential growth projected. And 
certainly you know, decisions that are made as far as you know zoning changes or or even the current zoning will have an impact on what you actually achieve. You know what you want to promote. I guess um, it is within the realms of possibility, but certainly there's a lot of discussion that goes along with that. Okay, Joe. This is my I just want to add to that. I mean, it was something that we have a lot of conversation about the idea of you know the residential um, impact that's out there, and you know I think we've been I think well, we've all been up front with the community that this is intended to be an economic development project primarily, um, and we recognize that there will be a residential component of that, whether it be mixed use or whether it be incidental to the route. Um, you know, and the, I, I, there were a lot of concerns expressed about where are we going to gobble up too much capacity with residential, and then you know what would that do? And, um, we probably went three or four weeks on that question and, and really identified that when you apply the current zone, we don't gobble up the capacity. We have, I think it ends up being roughly 60% of the capacity available for growth in the future, which is um, you know, really good. I, I think we think we're expecting to take part of that growth out for Martin's Bond. I know we're all kind of holding that in the back of our head saying we know that that's an area we want to expand to, but that's a choice that would need to be made down the road, knowing the capacity is there. You know, again, trying to, you know, we use the example of the worst case scenario. The same is true for the zoning too. Um, we didn't want to take any liberties with what might happen with the zoning and just try to provide the community data that's based on the current zoning. And that's where you get some of those calculations. So you could easily, you know, and I'm not saying this is what we want to do, but if we could easily consider minimizing you know, the, the amount of the residential connection that's out there by the way we structure this and create capacity for additional growth authorized by rezoning, if that's what we wanted to do. I just felt that, like, I think we all felt, we weren't gonna make that decision mm -hmm. at this stage. This information needed to be out there for the community to digest and, and determine. So, you know, I think the good news is you have, you have a range that we can work with of the flow, fortunately, based on that 500,000 gallons uh, per day. Thank you. I have a question. Um, the flow estimate for today's Main Street environment. That was every um, every business, every home that's out there that would contribute to it. That's correct. Uh, and and on the intake there. of water, obviously, because that's all you could use. Um, so okay, so so the the, okay. the number that you that they came up with covers a hundred percent of Main Street's total use today, and that was two hundred thousand gallons, if I'm. Some, under, somewhere in that realm. Slightly on the sure. Uh, and, it, and it does eliminate the, uh, the, the irrigation use. It does. It does. It does eliminate that from okay. the numbers. Okay. Because that's a, you know at some point. That, that irrigation, those irrigation meters would not be water that goes to the, the sewer system. Right. Right. Just yes. to, to add to that, so we took that feedback when we got you know a month or so ago. Thank you for that. That's an important point. Um, and, and again, I think we're saying Main Street, but we're, you know, this obviously includes Concord Street and the stretch right. between on Park Street and then this stretch of North to Lowell as well. You know, with regard to the, the methodology, we, we've left on the table for the community to decide, the select board, you know, with input from, from everybody here, you know, to all of the folks that will have feedback. You know, I think we felt that the baseline of the water use was the fairest way to assess the betterment based on what someone's doing right now. Right. You know, I think that there are challenges when you start to go down the Title V example because, you know, when you just look at the sheer numbers, if we're going to say the average house along the route is a three-bedroom house or a two-bedroom condo or something like that, the, as Mr. Pierce knows, Title V wants us to say that's 220 or 330 gallons per day, right. but the water use for a three-bedroom house comes in at like 140 or 170 gallons per day. So right away, we have this skewing of the calculation I think we were concerned about. But we could go down that road and, and do it that way if we wanted to focus it more on, on growth. So I think we felt to, to start the conversation, because this is the start of the conversation, mm -hmm. using the water as the calculation was the fairest way to assess the government. Right. Right. Thank you. We, we do have, and the law does allow, uh, potentially for uh, additional assessment for future growth. You know, so uh, not assessing up front what potentially you know these properties could develop into. Um, that would be 
as part of our model, one of the things that we looked at is what's the what highest and best use for the property, and you start looking at potential water use that outstrips our you know, 500 to 3,000 gallons you know, per day. So it didn't seem reasonable that we'd want to start assessing properties for more than what we could provide them in you know, sewer capacity. Right. So we ratcheted that back down to you know, one, you know, method one and two, one being water use and two being you know, Title V current use. And uh, you know, there's a variation there, but you know, again, we're still looking at perhaps you know, the actual water use being the most fairs uh, and then just let potential change of the property dictate you know how much more they'll pay in the future uh, with additional capacity uh, being purchased if you will from the town's reserves any other questions one so uh, so you're using approximately 170 gallons as your edu well it was 130 is what they found for actual water use yeah. and so you know that's i think what you you saw there in, in the yeah. silver yeah, less, <coughs> less than, like, less than yeah, in my yeah. experience, the average three of their homes is about 167 gallons on average. So yeah. that 170, 160, 170, you came up out and said, wow, they were right on. <laughs> yeah, I think at one point, you know, there was a, a lot of different numbers that, you know, were, were being looked at as theoretical averages. I mean, when we really crunched the, the actual mm -hmm. water meter numbers, I mean, it was even going low. And I think maybe it's because there was you know, just a, a limited su uh, you know, subset of uh, single family homes on the right. same route. You know, it's not throughout the whole town. You know. so, so are you saying using 130 gallons as your EDU? Uh, I, I believe that's how the numbers are um, sort of used for the actual water mm -hmm. use method and 330 for the Title V actual Title V use. Yeah, yeah that's in the code, yeah. yeah. There's a big disparity there to, uh, <laughs> for calculation. It sure is. It is. Yeah. But you have to understand, I think that primarily that when you Title V, it, it, you know, anticipates that it's going to be going into a system that will age over a period of time and begin to lose its capacity. So, um, so um, still back to the 160, 170 gallons reality. So the one third is not off, not far off, because you would also not all the water that goes in is going to go back in the system, as you said. True. So that so those numbers I think are good. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Groundwater. Did you say that was tiny? Groundwater? No. 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 I, I, the beginning. Well, they had the they irrigation. Had... Yeah, the irrigation uh, water use um, is not factored into you know bedroom assessments. But we were on such a high water table. The the, the water that everybody has. That isn't tying into this, it's just wastewater. So the water that's brought into the homes uh, and discharged into what would be, you know, now their septic systems yeah. would be um, detoured to the municipal wastewater system. Yeah, you do have about 21,000 gallons of water from other places. Infiltration? Yeah, yeah so you got to, right. So what I, mean, I think that is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So any kind of design would, would have to leave room for you know groundwater infiltration into, into your pipes underground. If you get a cracked pipe, exactly. But but these pipes are going to be hopefully for many years. It's a it's a brand new system. It's a new system. Current, it's new technology. It's pipe not current technology. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's not old stuff that we lost. Still, we <laughs> still have a, a particular you know design criteria that we follow. Right. And, uh, so that's what. And those street trains are tied into this. That, that's all a separate system. You'll see in all the communities where, you know, they, they start out with a drainage system that becomes a sewer system that dumps into the water that, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you create a sewer treatment plant to deal with that and you still have a combined system that you spend lots of money on to try to separate after the fact. Right. Right. That's not the situation. We're not, we're not going to have that we're at all. From scratch. Ours is just going to be sewer. That's correct. Well, Period. You, UGLSC will have occasionally on a really bad storm, we'll get a little bit overwhelmed in there as some of the street drainage still gets into that oh yeah and it right. still gets into right. the sewer because they have infiltration and exfiltration they have leaks and they have infiltration right. so right that's not to say that our, our convey the uh, wastewater conveyance isn't going into a plant that you know yeah oh yeah <laughs> they, 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 the so have the have the the and, and andover system and right right the other systems are they've got leaks i'm sure right but as part of the agreement I, that we would have tying into the glsd you know, DEP requires a certain amount of removal of I and I 
from the system and it wouldn't be our system it, it's, it's yeah, you know, but it would be one of the neighboring communities that are also tied in with the GLSD mm -hmm. so you know the, there'll be a four to one uh, requirement so right. we'll move you know 200 um, two million gallons per day <coughs> Are there any questions on Zoom? Don't see any. I don't see any. Yes. Just for the general welfare of the community, a couple of announcements relative to further um, opportunities to ask questions. Oh. So we have a email account that is now live. It's sewer at northwritingma.gov. So if anyone's got a question, they can send it right in. We can try to the DPW director myself, and I think the town planner as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that's a way folks can email. Um, if you go to the homepage of the website at www.northwritingma.gov, there's a link right on the front for wastewater planning. The presentation you just saw is on there. Information about uh, upcoming information sessions, including the first one, which is next Tuesday, October 11th at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, last night we had it advertised as the library activity room and moved to a bigger venue in the distance learning lab at the middle high school. Uh, we would encourage uh, anybody who wants to learn more about this project outside of uh, public bodies meeting where they can kind of ask questions directly to folks. That's the first opportunity to do that. Uh, there'll be a handful of other similar opportunities over the course of the month of October and November, along with some more targeted information sessions. So there's plenty of opportunity to ask questions and learn about the project, and it just starts by going to the town's website if you have access um, and uh, looking at the presentation in further detail, sending an email if you have any questions, calling. Um, so we have a pretty extensive outreach plan beyond that as well. Good. Thank you. And we're talking about a potential town meeting, special town meeting, Monday, December 5th. There's not been scheduled yet, but that's what we're <clears throat> discussing. Those dates are all important. Very important information. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the board? Daniel, you got any questions? No. Good. Just, just well, one, yeah, one thing that I'll, I'll add, you know, I hope there's continued discussion on the board here too. Um, sort of decide, you know, what their thoughts are for, you know, the, you know the growth in this community. That we were talking, we were, David and I were talking a little bit about that last night before you walked into town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but certainly that's always great conversation and preparing for it's, what may be. That's what we do. All right. We try to prepare. Very good. Yeah, I just wanted to yes, Warren. say you great, this is a great job, John. That's, uh, and that information is all real good, so. Look forward to continuing that conversation. If people get comfortable with the whole thing, it's going to be an easier thing to work with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank Michael? Michael too. Just a closing comment. I want to acknowledge Don't Joe, Joe's work. Joe's put countless hours into this. I know he has. Um, they're not here, but Mr. Studio and Mr. O'Leary yeah. as well have put hundreds of hours over the past year in the, in the planning. Uh, but I want to recognize Danielle, who's been at every meeting throughout this whole thing as well. And that's sort of we just right, right, she, she can't help it. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, and, and certainly, when we get in the way, then she can help it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she, and she's been very careful not to put forth any policy position that any commission does not identify, yep. but has been very much very supportive in helping us with mm -hmm. just a strategy of you know, what makes sense and you know, how the growth you know, fits together. So I do want to thank you. Well, I guess in that, we'll close that up. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, uh, Kleinfeld, for uh, the presentation, and uh, we'll be talking again soon. Like Great. Way. Thanks, everyone. I like the way Thanks you did that. That was, a, that was well Thanks done for a presentation. All right. All right. We got MBTA. MBTA, and that's Danielle. I need a move now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for running that, Danielle. Oh, you're welcome. I'm going to still keep an eye on it. Hey Mike, will you uh, zoom up the lights for us a little bit, please? Thank you. That's too much. No, that's good. That's good, thanks. So the zoom maybe is in the second workshop session here.
our agenda. Yes, but what to show Right. But yeah, we right. So, our, the uh, sewer, the municipal sewer station is completed. And we're going to go into the MBTA community housing discussion. Danielle. So, I provided some of the information that I gained recently from um, a webinar that uh, DHCD ran, and there was a lot of information, a lot of updates that were given. Um, the final regulations were released. Um, they are a little bit different from the draft regulations, but for our purposes, um, nothing actually changes for North Reading um, because we don't qualify in the small town category. If we did, then there would be some additional changes. But I think that what, um, so I guess the important milestones we maybe need to have in mind are, well, the next milestone is the end of January, we need to report to the state whether or not we believe we comply and where we don't comply, um, we need to give them an action plan. And that action plan doesn't need to be set in stone. They understand that it involves going to town meeting to change zoning, um, but we at least need to let them know what our intent is. And after looking through all of the updates and asking some questions and discussing with uh, planners and other communities, I, I think that our easiest path might be, and this is kind of just to start the discussion, um, certainly we can explore other things, but I think our easiest path might be to just change our site plan review process so that it is no longer a special permit process. And I think at, as it looks right now, if we were to do that, then we would be compliant with this program. And that's because we- Just doing that one thing. Just doing that one thing. And that's because we already have a zoning district that from what I can see, I believe complies. And that would be the whole multifamily overlay that we did um, for the Barry Center that included, um, you know, the Edgewood development and Martin's Landing. Okay. Um, not every parcel in that would count um, because public land doesn't count. So we own three of the five parcels in that district, but the other two that have Martin's Landing and Edgewood on them um, already have an under have already have an overlay on them that allow multifamily by right and. The way that we've been told to think about this is um, I, I wasn't sure whether land that's already been built and developed could count and how it would count because we have to show that we could have a capacity in our zoning district for 750 units and it has to be 50 acres at least and what i've been told is that you're supposed to envision the zoning district as if it's vacant land it doesn't matter if it has you know martin's landing on it and edgewood on it imagine what if it were raised and the owners of those properties came in with a brand new proposal and they wanted to do by right multifamily housing. We could still do a site plan review, but we would not be allowed to ask for a special permit process for that. And if we did that, then we would, I, I believe we would be compliant from what I understand about the program right now. So I, you, <laughs> you'd like to ask a question, so maybe I'll pause there. Well, questions? Uh, yeah, that, so, so basically we, we wouldn't be We'd just be rezoning those those two parcels up there or that area up there. Would we would we leave the that Wall Street parcel that we have out of it though, right? Well, we wouldn't even have to rezone anything. All we would have to do is remove our the only reason why the current zoning on those properties doesn't count for it's us because it's a special permit. Is because it requires a special permit for so the site plan review. So we re re word if we we were in the overlay district? The overlay we, district. We could just do the overlay and, district. And, and remove that. Yeah, and remove that as a requirement. As a requirement. And just go back to straight site plan review, yeah. the way site yeah. plan review was. And if we did, if we did anything on Main Street, mm -hmm. we, we, there's no way we're going to come up with We can't do 50 contiguous acres. No, I, there's enough land. There's enough up there. Up there, there it is. There, there is. Yeah. There is. We could if we right. wanted to. I think that probably would be harder. It would be interesting and it might be very beneficial in some ways. I think it would be controversial. Um, it certainly would be something we would need to look at and talk about and think about, especially if we're going to actually be introducing sewer because right. then if you bring in the zoning and you bring in the infrastructure, well, now that really is a catalyst for real mm -hmm. development. A lot yes. of it. So. Yes. I think if we can comply, um, if we can comply with this just by 
removing that stipulation on the on the overlay district. That's what we should do for January. Okay. Yeah, and then, I think that's and then, easy. That's that's yeah. like a no brainer for us. And, and then and then we can see how they move forward. They didn't really. There were no. There was no exceptions uh, so far as I understand. There were no exceptions allowed for towns that don't have because we, we don't have any public grants. Right. So, the, but, but there's no there's no exceptions in this for the, for somebody who doesn't have any public transportation. So, right. so we just um, so I think that would. But I think if we wait and see uh, as the thing goes, because the thing's still in flux right now. Right? They're still figuring out what they're going to do. Well, they're telling us that it's final. I, I that's what they're telling us. Is that it's they'll final. keep changing it? In, in February, in February <laughs> they'll probably change so it because what, people won't be able to comply. Yeah, let's do what we can to comply with, 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 the, with the next step and, then, and see where they go with it. So, what what do we have to do to remove that stipulation that's on those two properties? So that would be a zoning change. So so that has to wait till June. Right. So what we would do in the meantime is we could let the state know that it's the town's intent. Our action plan would be to go to town meeting in June with a zoning proposal that would change the requirements for site plan review, either townwide or in just that district alone. As an aside, I wouldn't mind all that much if we changed it townwide because having a special permit as part of the site plan review process is a little bit complicated in a way that I'm not sure is necessary, but that's, that's a discussion we can continue to have. Well, we can um, continue to have. We can, yeah, we can I mean, talk we about have, that. We have several months. We do, we do. And actually we would have, you know, we can tell the, the state that that's our intent. And if by the time, you know, spring rolls around and it's not looking like a good idea, or really we would like For to change our For the rest of the town, but those two, then, those two parcels, we, yeah. Yeah. you know, we just, yeah. We want to go through with that right. and, and make those two parcels maybe comply for us mm -hmm. with the state, but also for you looking mm -hmm. at the other things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it, if it makes more sense to do what you're saying. Well, yeah. This is what Chairman thinks. So is, it, is this more about removing the, the, the barrier, if you will, so you can get that? Or are there any numbers attached to this? Because you mentioned kind of starting out with that open slate, blank property, what could you, what's the most you could put on that property? Yeah, really. yeah. So is there, you know, so again, yeah, what, what are we, what do we have now, for instance, with the edge water, edge wood, and, and um, Well, we have, uh, so there's, we know we there's capacity for 950 units more? in that district. No, total, but yeah. we don't have to have more. All we have to have, like we can show easily that we yeah. could get 750 units on that property because there already are um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 750 okay, permanent. So that's what we have, like around 750. Right well, now. we have, so Edgewood has 406 units yeah. and Martin's Landing is permitted for, actually now it's um, 502. Right. Yeah. So, but, but are they built out in the sense of, I mean, meaning removing the special permit thing mm -hmm. on two properties that are already all built out? Mm -hmm. That's great. I'm glad it, it checks the box for us. It checks but the box. does it really, does it, are we going to be seeing any applications for site plan review on these two parcels that are already kind of built out? I think we should keep in mind that it, it, it could be a possibility. If we yeah. rezone for something and tell people they can do something by right, then we have to expect that it's possible we could get an application. Will Edgewood and Martin's Landing be? raised, re-permitted, redesigned, and added on to? Unlikely. I'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're brought sewer, you never know. Then I mean, that thing maybe it's so, more likely that yeah, they could. So maybe, yeah. But then we, we removed that problem for them. Well, they, but they but built, uh, uh, they Martin Hennig's already so. built as tall as they can by state right. code. Right. Right. It's, it's already right. covered. It's already yeah. covered. Yeah. Okay. So that's <laughs> yeah, 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 the last that, one. We have to tear that down and start with steel. Right. Yeah. They were going to do that, so right. it's unlikely that they would do that. Right. Big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. Um, okay. That's we, good. No, in that, so there's five parcels up there, correct? There are five parcels. We know two of them are two of them are committed to private public. You mean two are state? Right? Well, two are um, Edgewood and Martin's Landing. Right. Private. That's two. Then there's the other three other three ones are, that we own. We own. Yeah. Right. So one of them is that three and a half acre parcel right in front of Edgewood that we don't quite know what to do with. Right, we won't be given credit for that. At then, the there's, then there's a larger parcel on the right hand side, mm -hmm. which we had as a reserve area for septic, septic 
for, for uh, Oh, you're right, Leona. So that's actually another small parcel. Is that small? It's pretty small. Yeah, it's did we, two acres. Do we maybe? actually all know? Do we just have a uh, we own option it. or, or a, uh, an easement on it? No, we actually own it because Pulte didn't want it, so they A and R'd it and they I think initially we, it. we just were gonna have it. Right, right. Yeah. So maybe they, they, maybe they, now they, with those two pieces apart, those two parcels, mm -hmm. we've got something that we can then we we may take, have something take, else. Take yeah. Out there. Yeah. Because no, they, they'll also have sewer there. Po if very if possibly. this goes through, <laughs> there should be sewer. Yeah. They're coming all the way down yes. to that to that property, mm -hmm. correct? We think so. As of now, it's on the route. As of now, it's, uh, it's, it's on, on the route that's been proposed. So, yeah. quick sidebar, but mm -hmm. along the lines of how? So, you, what? What do you think are the benefits of getting rid of the special permit requirement? I'm, I'm all open, but I just want to understand. Like you've seen it more, you guys, you've yeah. seen it more, you've seen yeah. it more. Why does it make sense? I mean, in my opinion, site plan review is supposed to be a process where it is by right if you can make, meet all the requirements yeah. and the board is not asked to make any discretionary decisions about use. There's no special use permit involved. And so for a real special permit, there is actual discretion and you can say no for certain reasons. With site plan review, you're not really supposed to be able to say no to the use. And so I don't really see any added value to having it behave like a special permit process i think it's more onerous on the developers but it's not necessarily it doesn't really give us any more power but it, isn't it usually just for use that's what the special that's permit what it in. should be so it's I mean, unusual to have it for site plan review right so, so the well, area is if you can have multifamily, uh anything residential mm -hmm. then why would you need to get a special permit for for, for site use? plan review mm -hmm. oh yeah no i mean i think that for site plan review it, it it just kind of unnecessarily complicates it. If you already have a special use permit that's required somewhere, then that makes sense. Yeah. But if you're going to require a special permit for a site plan review as just well. For, okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah. they have that just for a site plan as review. well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, special that's, permitting is not gonna go away, but just for this situation. I we're mean, still, we're, so, we're so fully developed right now that, that the that our exposure to anything that is probably pretty small. Right. So we could get rid of that a special permit and, and um, not really suffer much damage so you mean for those parcels yeah yeah, yeah. I, I agree for those selected parcels it i don't it wouldn't keep me up at night no. about any possible bad effects i yeah. think that it may be worth talking about removing it townwide only because i do think it's a little unnecessarily complicated with the process and it also requires a super majority so it can introduce some quorum issues as we go through the review process um it's it is it, it it creates a situation where it makes it look as though we have a little bit more discretion over those projects and i think in fact we really do, yeah, we do. so I, it, it's fine to leave it as is i think that's okay um but we can talk about whether we want to keep it i do think it's a little bit onerous yeah. for just like well, we should move forward on on uh on the plan anyway so we can submit that to the state and then but right. when it comes time to actually bring it to town meeting we can Take a look at it and decide if we want to go with the town wide or a bigger one. We we can yeah. Just so pretty straightforward. But comments back take, to taking state. taking care of the MBTA issue. Yeah. So that you, it's off your plate. Right. You know, getting it there sooner it doesn't hurt us, correct? The no, we certainly could submit it. I think my one question would be, um, I mean, I can submit You can have it, it ready to go. And then submit it in January instead of, I mean, yeah. no, don't do it now, but get it done and off your plate so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Sure. And I guess part of it is this is kind of an unusual program. And I think we've been, you know, it, it makes sense for us to figure out what, what we are recommending doing in terms of actually being the person to submit it. I don't mind being the person to submit it, but I want to make sure we're asking everybody who should have input into this. Yeah. Plus I mean, the we tools can't. Aren't out until November, right? So whatever those are. Yeah. <laughs> whatever what what is not the tools. tools. The tool. Right. They haven't submitted the compliance tool. Yeah. So yeah. everything I told you tonight could end up being wrong if I go through the compliance tool. Right, yeah. so, there's yeah. something yeah. that I didn't know about. Um, but also, I didn't know if maybe we should have a little bit further. I mean, we can't take it to town meeting before we know yeah. what we're doing. I mean, we can't ask town meeting um, informationally what they would like, but maybe we should have a discussion with the select board to see if they might agree with that approach um, as far as eliminating um, the requirement for a special permit in that way. I could write something up maybe for discussion. Yes, yes ma'am. Can I ask my longtime members, um, what was the actual purpose of that being put there? Do you 
the mm -hmm. special permit. Yeah. That was done before the I site was. Plan. No, basically, what basically the idea was that it, we thought, and again, Daniel's right. We thought that it, it gave them one more hurdle to, to, to climb. And, and we, you know, to be honest with you, to, to look at the whole big picture, we we created a lot of the problems that we have um, in this town by what we by what we required. I mean, if you go to other towns. They don't require granite curbing. I mean, they can do the country drainage is fine. You go up to, just go up to Andover and there's, there's million dollar homes on a street that has no sidewalks, no curbing, no drainage. Um, I personally was offended by all of that. So they, so, so they, so they, so they, um, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, um, and yet our, our uh, subdivision control law is so, so strict with all the things that yeah. we require somebody to do that we made the lots and everything so expensive to develop that it was yeah. we, we forced them to put huge houses. So in other words, we created a lot of our own problems with this and, and with the special permit situation. So um, I think that the, the state is basically after everybody to stop that, right? you know, and to make the building of housing uh, as housing being one of the main things that the state is concerned about. So they want us to back off basically. And, and make it really easier for people to build, for housing to be developed, so we can house people, basically. So, yeah, but you know I think that's the, that's the genesis of this whole yeah. this So it was, whole a caution, thing. it was a caution thing back then when there was so much... You know, yeah. so we, just, we, were just, we were exhibiting a lot of uh, probably unnecessary control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But you know what? The contractors will build a house as big as they can build a house on a small piece of property as they can. Yeah. And they'll take as much money as they can. So. What we did doesn't didn't really slow them down. Yeah, they made some big houses in the beginning when it was kind of extra. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't you know. I think that I think that the market there, there was a period of time when the market for those houses didn't wasn't there, and they would have loved to build smaller houses, but the cost of the land stayed up, and, and there was just no and and, the re, and not just the cost of land, but the requirements that we put on yep. them. You know. Doesn't cost any less to put grand uh, curving uh, on a million dollar home or on a, on a, on a, a two hundred thousand dollar home. Grand curve is grand curve. <laughs> I mean, you know, so that's that's what it is. I mean, it's forever. It's, it's good forever. for the town. That's, that's the one thing. It's forever. Yeah, it's good for the town because they, you know, they don't keep losing Cape Cod berm and having to fix it over and over and over. But, but again, it's. Uh, it's, it's very. It's, it's, it's that's just one of the examples that yeah, we no, require. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying that. Right now, when 40 bees came to town, they build them as big as they can on the lowest piece of property as yeah. they can. Because that's what they're going to do. Yeah. You know, they're not looking at making a small house anymore. Yeah. That one time, you're correct, they were. Yeah. They would have made a, maybe a smaller house. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Back to you, ma'am. So that's what I think we should do. I, I know that at some point we should have a discussion with the select board jointly to see whether we think that that's the right approach. But yep. certainly this, um, uh, the what's due to the state with our intended action plan is not binding. So we can always just submit it by the deadline. I mean, knowing that yeah. everyone's going to be pretty busy all fall and right. winter, I'm yeah. sure, with the sewer project and everything else. Yeah. We yeah. can submit it, meet our eligibility requirements, and then we can have a more serious discussion as Closer we approach. Right, yeah. Yeah. Closer, Closer to town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to the select board about it. Mean, could so. be more straightforward. I, I yeah, hope it ends up being more yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. I know that we, we were looking, if, especially if we get the special town meeting goes through and we get. Is that No, I mean the, the motion carries basically. Um, that yeah. we want to look at rezoning major. So mm -hmm. maybe we can do it. I don't know if it's too big a hit to do it all in one, but maybe it's not. We could. I mean, the the MBTA community's rezoning doesn't have to happen until the end of 2023. So we don't have to target June town meeting for that. Uh, so we could do that in like October. If we, we could do that to. in October. You, sure. could, you could mention it in the January submission as a yeah. thing you're looking at, but yeah. like you said, non binding. Right. That was bad, but we might not even want to float it. Right. Keep that in our pocket for the next one because they're going to come back in two years. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to move it. <laughs> stick right. down. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're like, make it go down farther. <laughs> okay. Go down farther. Go. And Where else we, do we you might have? Not, we might not have to go any farther if we do the right stuff. Yeah, it's but, true. But <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very important. I mean, Joe talked about it, and, and uh, the TA talked about it, you talked about it. We talked about it last night. 
before you got there, one. Mm -hmm. But uh, about about you know, if we get sewer down Main Street, we have to think of what we got there now. Absolutely. You know, we have an overlay on the corner, right? Mm -hmm. But what's an overlay? And it's small. It's, it's, it's it is small. It's we need ten to do, acres. Right. We need to do the whole thing. Yeah. Fourteen acres. Really want to see. Right. And and, and and you know, let's get it right. Yeah. Let's let's do it. Let's do it right. And if that means going yeah. October, if the whole street's gonna be transformed, yeah. 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 it's gonna all change overnight. It's gonna, it's gonna and gonna we don't change. I think it'll change a little slower than you think. <clears throat> I think you're right, but what you don't want to do is not don't have don't be ahead of it with the zoning. Yeah, you gotta, so you gotta plan for that change. Yeah. So yeah. what we have to do? People are gonna be purchasing lots, spending money on design, all yeah. that, and all that stuff takes time too. So I think we just need to be ahead of it because this takes time. Okay. Yeah, through town meeting. So you want so you're talking there. about doing a, a housing overlay on well, all the main street. I floated it back in August, but it's not like it's not on other people's minds. But if we, it, it, it's one thing if nothing was changing on Main Street, and I had this initiative, like I drove through Harvard, I don't want to be just like Harvard and have Dunkin' Donuts that are all multicolored and McDonald's arches. I want to have this nice kind of cool look, you know, that makes us a little bit more. Yeah. You know, we, we have the chance to transform yeah. the way Main Street looks, and we're so used to it, not looking very good. You know, it's been just dealer, auto dealerships and whatever. It's the highest, best use. That's what's out there right now. But we have a chance to do it. But if we don't do anything, we, we're going to just get these... Yeah, you know, we don't have, we're just going to get any well, we design did, they we did want. Try that. We did try that at one point. We actually set up four separate districts on Main Street, right? And, and those to created, we needed to have the square footage that they were changing. Yeah. Until that, and when that kicked in, yeah. Heavenly Donut did it. They designed it in from the beginning. Yeah. Because because of Debbie, mm -hmm. you know, she called me and said, "Hey, what can we do here?" And I said, "We'll give them that and say design from this because that's going to help yeah. you get." And we we I I think we made one change in that building. Mm -hmm. One change to that building, and that was it. Yeah. They designed to that overlay. <laughs> but I, I did the final inspection on it because we didn't have a planning administrator at the time. Huh? You just wanted donuts. I got a donut. <laughs> kind of donut so yeah. Yeah. But if we let's but get I rid of, but I didn't sign off either because I, I didn't like the saying. traffic pattern. We had to change that traffic pattern. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a whole yeah. other. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's get let's get rid of the it's overlay. Still not great. The real better than it was on Main Street. I'm I'm more I think. Referring to you want the uses because we have so much residential and everything like right. that to serve on them. So we want to try to flip that number, I think, and, and create more housing and mixed use. But I think it's also the aesthetic part. We That's want to right. make sure right. it looks yeah. again. Right. I just like if you just pull up those some of those towns, they did it right. I mean, they're right. not they're not you know they're they're a little bit more rural clearly. But they when you drive through a mile stretch, it's, it's got high schools and all this. Retail and it's no different than our Main Street to book, and it looks fabulous. And I think we should try to do that because it's all going to be new. Yeah, there'll still be the places that are there now that are pretty new, the Firestone, and you know, you know, they have every right to be there. It's just yeah, the try Walgreens to, and so yeah, the Walgreens. Yeah. But, but let's Walgreens try to infill it with, try try to infill it with a little bit of um, in, in other towns. Style. They look a lot different than ours does, yeah. but they didn't have to. They had we had no we had no yeah. Pointy stick to stick yeah, out. Yeah, nothing in the zone yeah, right nothing. now. For so we need to, or and that's what in that district. Right, I'm not trying to like whole limit it across right. town. So what do you, want, you want to put design criteria? I think it'd be, I, and again, you're talking about a very limited spot. Like, is, is it even a mile? You know, well, there's, well there's, there's, I know that there's, um, I remember we had this big discussion about a, uh, I, and, and I don't, I don't, I, can't, I think it was a Dunkin' Donuts. And, um, and they uh -huh. said, oh, we got we to have this, we got to have this. And then uh, we looked at down down the Cape in one of the towns down there. Oh yeah. And they had they, what not even a sign. I mean, all they had was the little words on the place. Yep. That's all they would let them do. Yeah. Yep. With no colors, no flashy. And signs, they didn't need nothing. it, and they still survived. You yeah, can find that yeah. store today. Yeah. Remember we told, we talked about that. You, you can find know. that store today. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was in Sedona. They have a they have a McDonald's. It was it wasn't purple. It was green. Yeah. It was this? They don't have yellow arches. They got no yellow on the really building. It's there. green, yeah. and yeah. they've gone through three sets of those arches in green, because hmm. they're they're in historical collections. Yeah. Um, so it, it can be done. Yeah. It can be done, but you've got to have 
the power to do it. Yeah, there was. I, but I remember in those towns, there was a lot of pushback from the people trying to build in that town. And yeah. it, but there was a pushback be because it's, you got to go back to corporate and get a, an okay yeah. from corporate. You're gonna, you got to be ready for to battle. So. Yeah. <laughs> But if you have it in well, in the writing, Walmart was another example where they wanted to put a cookie cutter one, and we refused to yeah, let you. Yeah, you refused that. that, right? I remember that yeah. Same with the stop yeah. and shop. That was a long battle to get yeah. them to go along with what we wanted. And then See, we went to the grand opening, and the guy stood up and said, "The Walmart designed the whole thing." Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walmart designed it. <laughs> stop and shop was the same thing. Yeah. And I saw that same store after it was it, it was built here in Fall River, mm -hmm. almost the exact same store. Yeah. They liked it. The, they liked, yeah, they liked it. it yeah. The facade fit in. Mm -hmm. It, it yeah. didn't look any different than the surrounding stuff. It was what was done here. Yeah. And it was done out just So out. I think developing the, that that criteria that you wanted, I think that's going to take a little doing. Yeah, yeah I think we, we need to really cut paste somewhat from other communities. Yeah. Maybe we can. I mean, we can. All right, Daniel, we'll have we our attorney check that out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see if that's okay. Oh, you need this guy? <laughs> see what we can get away with before yeah, we see what through. we can get away with. <laughs> well, that was that was why I was turning to you. How much yeah. of this can we we can still do? We can do. I mean, any zoning you want to okay. introduce, we can do it as long as it's stuff that can be regulated by zoning. Okay. I mean, we can go back. As long to as it's clear and concise, it's its own section. We can call it its own thing. It's just the new Main Street overlay. No, I, I just like to get rid of the overlay altogether. Well, I mean, or yeah, do that. I just just make, we can, we can do that. And I think that would make Jerry happy, too. Probably get rid of the overlay district. Why need it? If we're going to redo it, let's redo it. You mean business overlay, so that, redefine that, where it is. Where does it, where does what, it what Main right Street now? is? So highway what? business is all of Main Street. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of that. You mean just kind of redo it's it. Not, it's not to all time. It's yeah. Highway business is Main Street. You got that, and then you, you've got local business. That's that's down at the yeah, top. And you're right. Yeah. That, you know, and then we do highway business. Just do highway business. Yeah. I, I think one of the questions I like for having an overlay, it's nice because you can do portions of it, or right. you could do separate zoning districts. But I think one of the questions <coughs> is going to be: Is there interest in having more residential and mixed use? And if so, how much of it? Is it all of Main Street? Is it all of highway business, or is it sections? How much is too much? So that's those were some of the questions in the presentation where mm -hmm. we're talking about, okay, we looked at a full build out that could take a ton of new development. That doesn't mean that that's necessarily what we're going to target right. with zoning. So we're going to have to figure out, we, the is town, it, are going to have to figure yeah, out is, is, how right. much is it development. it's all residential? And it's in all five-story buildings? Right now, 60 feet is the height limit on Main Street. And right. all of a sudden, are people going to be able to build to that yeah, height? 60 feet is five stories. That's a lot. I mean, or I think it might, I don't know if there's a four story limit or 60 feet in the zone. What's zoning. the highest we have there? Uh, the highest would probably be the self storage facility and I think it's close to that. Yeah. I don't know if it's 60 feet. But that's the facade. It's not even their roof. Their roof is lower than their facade. Yeah, it's true. they have parapet walls around it, yeah. Um, so we don't have a lot of very tall buildings, no. but it's been in the zoning since at least the 90s. So I don't know. Is that something we still well, want? Unless it's storage, you know, you're going to have toilets and bathrooms and mm -hmm. stuff in a six-story, five-story, and then there's no sewer. So, but once there, once, there's, once yeah. there is, then all of a sudden everything. that changes everything. What That's level why of development we are we? Exactly. Get out ahead of the game. Yeah. You know, do, doing mixed use is a good thing at that point. You know, mm -hmm. your first floor is going to be something, and then you put. Two floors of. I just don't of, see the mixed use. Um, that whole concept. I think it had its time, but I, um, there's way too many empty spots. We can't look at North Reading because right now we got some. We got some stuff, like like the storage place. Nobody's moving in there because he's charging way too much money right. for, his, for his square footage. Just outrageous amount of money. They go into a ne the, the next building down and they're getting less per square foot. And his buildings are just a carpool. He's got nothing special. Mm -hmm. One next door is actually yeah. really nice. I mean, UPS wanted to go into his building. Priced them right out. Mm -hmm. Priced them right out. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to look at. You know, that's, and, and, and that's... Well, I, I think I've looked at a, a number of other places where the same thing is going on, so I'm not... 
I, I still think that that, that model. We're, we're not talking, you know, mixed use as an office space. Yeah. You yeah, know, I know. Uh, it's not retail spaces, first floor retail. Yeah. Because when we, even when we were looking at it at, at the Heffron property there and all that, um, towards the end, even our even our consultant was saying, well, you know, maybe you ought to stick to more just all residential. Yeah, well, put the commercial just over that's here. That's exactly what they did. Is they took they took yeah. that whole place and made it all well, basically well, residential. Well, they, there you go. So it's, it's not just me seeing that. I mean, they they uh, they are professionals and they saw it. So. So, but I saw it also. So. Having residential is not a bad thing too. I mean, if you go, if you just go travel over towards where Danielle lives, you know, leave here Wakefield into, mm -hmm. you're seeing Resi all on those streets and it, it well, works. That, and they're kind of new, there's a lot of new, really cool looking contemporary spaces. That yeah, that really NAPC nice, so. study that, that said we needed some more, uh, yeah. we needed some more. And then in between a restaurant, you know. To feed, you know, to feed the, the businesses that we yeah. got there, so. Yeah. When you go, when you get, once first, you get once you get enough residents, that's when the first space. floor spaces get taken up by restaurants or that's what you hope. You know, it, it, it can work. The the South goes in yeah, there. Yeah, but you're not going to get the restaurants and all that because until you have sewer. With the sewer, you know. well, I get, yeah, I get, yeah. I'm not that's talking right. anything now. No. I'm talking sewer, but we have you're to get the zoning. Right. Yeah, we got to we got to think about doing zoning. So that the zoning is ready when the oh, sewer is done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they, you envisioning like hand over? No, I mean that. What are you envisioning? It's it's a great question, Liam. But um, I, I, I guess I guess I guess what I, I don't want to I don't want to see <laughs> and I don't yeah. want to see what we have now or right. in in we more go through renting and more and more show or more cheap. You know, like and burger things and all this kind of stuff just popping up and. and like right. that's what I don't they have want a defined to say. center. We don't. So right. I think the answer. And they to had question, stuff done ahead of time. I think the answer to your question is that we would, and, and it's kind of what we tried to do before, is that we would have uh, um, sections of this road out here that would have mini centers, if you will, and then some spaces in between, and then another one where there's a where there's a concentration of things. I think that's the only way we can do it. There's no other. Um, there's no other concept that works on a road like that with the speed limit that's on it. I mean, they oh, right. Well, that's, that's the reason. So the only other thing would be is if we actually do element. rebuild that yeah. road, if the state comes through, redoes that yeah. road, maybe when we put sewer in, we change it from a four lane to a three lane and uh, slow the traffic down a little. The and then you'll be able to develop, the, I think, these, these uh, centers. Yeah. You know, there's slow, so many elements happening all slow the people down. time right now. So you take the area like the Walmart area, and, and it's kind of grown up a little bit, and it has a, a not, there's a number of different things you can go when you go into that parking lot, not just the Walmart, but the AAA and yeah. all of the, the bank, and you got uh, the Marshalls, you got a bunch of things you can do there. So if you had a few of those kind of segments, you, they wouldn't be concentrated like they are in Reading and in Andover, but you could still do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And they, with the calmer traffic, it would be more accessible. You got to remember Reading, their square, Andover. Those buildings were built in the 18, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. They were right on the road. Yeah. And maybe you know, three stories or whatever. Three, four, four stories. Not you know, they're great buildings, of, yeah. you know, and, and for them, it worked out perfectly. Yeah. You know, especially Andover. Mm -hmm. But Reading also, their little area there, they got the train station. Mm -hmm. They get a lot of people that walk because right. of the train right. station that helps that whole center. They've got so many lights too that you really can't go very yeah. fast. You can't go very yeah. fast. Yeah. Keep I mean, and you can go faster, but you can't yes. because it's 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 only two lanes. Yep. So Actually, we have a chicken and the egg problem. It seems like because as you're saying with Andover and Reading, they have historically built in walking districts. Yes. There you, know, you go. There's been. There's been a draw to those areas. People want to live around yeah. there. They yeah. want to right. develop build, around there. Andover had build buildings. Yeah, yeah. And we the, we have the we have the exact opposite. Right. Right. We had a, we've we got had park, we've got big parking lots. We had yeah. farms yeah. here. That's yeah. what was here. Yeah. But that's where the thing with like uh, you know bringing in residential, you know especially some high density residential. I can already see the, the yard signs, you know, and it's just such a thing that people are very apprehensive about. But it takes putting in some high density residential to have the foot traffic to develop all the stuff around right. it, yeah. you know. Um, and so it's like, 
Yeah, it's a chicken and the egg. You're, you're, you're correct. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, the 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 the, the having the trains. I mean, we used to have a trolley that ran down Main Street. Yeah, we sure did. That's yeah. gone. Yeah. I forget when that went away. What early 1900s? Well, it created a lot of problems with the trolley on that that line. No, oh, I know it creates it creates, it creates all problems, problems all the time. time. Everybody, all of a sudden, nobody had any frontage anymore on <coughs> Main Street, and then one lawyer bought up the entire thing and piecemealed it out over the years. Yeah. So, <laughs> but that's that's you know, but we were a farming community. That yeah. and it, you know, Martin's Pond was a summer resort area. People from Boston bought their little cottages out there with their fifty-five gallon drums in the ground for the summertime. <laughs> and they weren't there in the winter time. Right, Warren? Yeah, it should be. It's just it's just like there's a, a little place like that in, in Reading. The ABC streets. Those were all little cottages in there. They used to go to Lake Winnipeg, which is just across the way. Um so well, I think this goes back to the topic of, you know, months ago about that, you know, uh, Main and Winter Street intersection of what kind of thing could we do there to really get the public's attention and, you know, imagination of what yeah. a re, you know, a reimagined, you know, little town center like that could, could look like, you know, and I, I hope the, the EDC takes up, you know, some of the, the kind of smaller projects between now and then to kind of show people that there's something to happen on Main Street, yeah. you know, and it's, uh, I, I think to a degree, we have to manufacture that, yeah. you know, we can't just leave it to happen. And so it, the idea I had last year of like the Christmas markets and things like that, we have these big empty parking lots filling what is prime real estate. We can at least in the meantime, start putting something in those parking lots, right? You know, whether that's getting kitties or, you know, stop and shop to, you know, to allow, you know, the town to do something on the, on their, in their parking lots. But, we got to show people there's something to go down and do, get them to think that I do want to have Main Street redone in a way that's walking friendly. But right now, nobody's going to care because it's like, I'm just going to drive my car to the Walmart parking lot. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think David's right. You know, let's get that vision. Got to start somewhere. Yeah. Got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. We're, we're working on zoning that's 30, at least 30 years old or more. And, and the town's changed around it. It's Warren, you changed it. It's the <laughs> number one thing, though, that people, because I'm pretty new to this, come up to me and tell me to ask, you know, when, when are you going to do something about Main Street? It's like yeah. the number one thing. And put sewers. Sewer is Sewer's always, good. that's always been my. Sewer's, sewer's the driving factor here. And that's what people have to see it without it. It doesn't change. Yeah. It doesn't change. So. Can't you see December 5th, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> right now. Unless yeah. it changes. Right yeah. All right. All right. Anything else, Daniel? Yeah, I just want to... Oh, we should do the CBAs. That's right. I think there's three there. Okay. So the next meeting is next Thursday. Unfortunately, it's not like... Two it's Wednesday. The 11th. Mm -hmm. Our meeting? Our oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the ZBA sorry. meeting. There. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. CBA. That's yeah. what I just said. When these are being... learning. Because you know how sometimes we're... Commenting on them in the meetings. Oh, oh you're talking about <laughs> ZBAs. Okay. Yeah, ZBAs. Uh, I was just pointing out it's next next Thursday, not this Thursday. What do you got? Um, what what I have is a computer that I'm not signed into. Um, oh, <laughs> can I, I, can, I, can I think these were all the ones that we <laughs> talked about last time. Sarah so yeah. the, the yeah, lakeside. Okay. Stay there. Never mind. Da right. David's going to take care of it for you. Oh. I'll pull them up there. I agree. Like okay. the lakeside one, on they gave paper. us more information. Just, so I'll just, I'll just list them off. So 33 Lakeside, 50 Southwick, and 197 Main. 33 Lakeside is the first one. And 33 we've seen a couple times. And that's the one that the applicant is looking to extend their porch uh, and put mm -hmm. a stair, stair down you know, from that porch on the back of the house. I've looked at it the first time, the second time. I don't know why we keep getting in front of us, but yeah, to I mean, do this by code, which you need a minute <coughs> 36 clear for a stair, um, um, and that's clear. That's not counting railings and all that, but it's, you're going to go over that 3.3 feet. There's 3.3 feet to the lot line. Yeah. And I know the applicant puts in a photo that shows a nice, you know, five or six feet in the backyard, but he's showing his fence along the water line, his property line, practically touching the house. 
So I don't see how you yeah. extend the deck and put in stairs and not go over the property line at that corner. And I just think it sets a bad precedent when, especially on, on something on, on you know, pond late side, you're actually allowing somebody to build over the, over the property line into the water. So I think probably your comment will be a big question mark the word, really? <laughs> yeah, meaning like, How do you mine's, design just, it safely? mine's just beware of precedent <laughs> setting. That would be mine and let the ZBA is going to do whatever they're going to do. But right, it just yeah, be, they sure are. I just think it's not a good precedent to set because other people are going to come back. Well, you let these guys do that. I don't want to build my deck now over the water. And I would think in that area too, everybody wants to get as close everybody. to the water as well. Their, their lots are so tiny. I get it. Yeah. You know, I get it. You know, but it's a beautiful place sometimes. Lots. You know, it's nice to see them, right? It's beautiful, but you can't like, if everyone does it. I mean, this is 5,400 square feet. Yeah. And, and where's the house? Well, the septic is in the front. And the house, yeah, the house is, is right up against Right the, on the yeah. bank. Right on the bank. They actually have a beach. Well, it's not it's a, it's a fence with, a, yeah. with some vegetation, but so that's that one. I don't know if any, you want, you want to say anything else? Or? I would think the Conservation Commission would have a few things to say about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm they, kind of surprised they should, have, yeah, they should have something to say about that one, too. I'm sure and they will. 15 Southway is 37 what Southway. What is your decision on this 33? Is, I didn't get that. Oh. Um, it would set a bad precedent to bad precedent. allow people to build so close to the pond. Is that? No picture on this. Yeah, or, you know, to, I, I think we can be as bold to say there's no way by code, because Jerry will be there, they can't build that without going over their law line. Okay. Because there are three feet at the corner in order to, they have to extend the deck to the left. If you love that plan, which, that the property line even pitches even more there. So they go under the three feet that they need for clearance. <coughs> All right, so this one is uh, um, uh, 37 is a uh, lot of things. For construction, okay, so uh, North Renniman, for home construction special permit for his construction business article 2042 North Renniman. Uh, Which one is so, 58,000. We looked at the I looked at it on the area and stuff. It, it just has a back kind of garage shop thing, maybe that's what they'll use. And Jerry just says, hold, permit use special permit from ZBA. Um, I mean, I would think as long as this one's more, again, at their discretion, but I think as long as, as it says here, we'll be using the home as an office. No employees or customers at the home can only be in one vehicle. I guess if you stick to that, yeah, if they adhere to the home occupation special permit bylaw, then they should be. Yeah, should be. I think that it's you know when you hear like mm -hmm. a consultant or whatever, but when you see construction business, you yeah, know, you're, how you're, many, what kind of what yeah, kind of you know, vehicles you are just, there? You know, yeah. as long as it's the same thing, and the person knows they can't start loading up trucks and one one ton. Um, um, this, to this neighbors. For Southwick, have you been there? Yeah, I know exactly where it is. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't. Think that he's actually got to be in the house because he's got that big garage out there. Yeah, it's in the back. That's what I saw in the. Uh, if you go to Google, it'll show the two properties. It's, uh, yeah. There's one house in the front, and then you drive back. Yeah, it's a garage. big, a big uh, a building in the back that I, I think that's usually where office was before. Well, I think it's it's limited to a certain area of the home, right? And that would probably include the garage. I, I would yeah, guess. Yeah, it's 200 square feet, right? I mean, I can't use a whole. Is it 300? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a grind in fact. I mean, the fact that they do a little bit more or whatever, but it's just, it's all about the trucks. Okay. Yeah, it's not fair to neighbors to have no. trucks and pickups and all flying back there, picking up materials, heading out. It's a, it's not what the RA is for. So should I just put, um, as long as they adhere to the bylaw and also question about um, how many vehicles they actually will need? I mean, I know it says in the application, yeah, so but do you want me to? Well, the, the number of vehicles are in the, are in it's the, in, it's in the application. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So let's just say it here to the bylaw. Yeah. I think you're probably okay. pretty safe on that okay. one. Okay, and then I'll go to the next one. Uh, yeah, he has a leg on that to stand on. 197 Main Street. 
So this one is one also that came up before. It's um, 197 is where landscaping. the pizza place is too, right off of um, 28. Yeah. And but I thought it was right. You know when I look, because if you Google 197 pops up right at the pizza place. So yeah. I thought it was like so you're. Oh, it's the very back of it. It's in the back. Yeah. 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 So oh, then, so then I'm not. Yeah. I, I, at first I was like, so you're gonna park behind the pizza place. And it just seems a little weird proposition, but I'm wrong. It's like they show it in the back. I don't see a huge problem. This, this is the one we just did the site plan review for the outdoor yeah. storage, right? Yeah. We yeah. talked about the yeah. fence storage. storage. Yeah. Uh, what's this one? Um, you're right. You're right. I on eight, last... You're 820. I wasn't here. It was the 830 meeting of the yeah. August, the end of August meeting. Yes. So yeah. it was. Um, so site plan review is required for outdoor storage. So they came in. The ZBA or Jerry wanted them to come to their site plan review first to be sure they could have the outdoor storage area before they came in to yep. get their landscaping special permit to the ZBA. Yep. So there was a decision issued allowing for the outdoor storage area, and now their next stop is the ZBA for the the landscaping permit. So I don't know if there was anything about that site plan review that you would want to. Mention, I can give a copy well, of was, it. Well, wasn't this supposed to be fencing around that? Um, yes. yes. Yeah, it was, yeah. it, you know, it's it's security fencing is what yeah. I was talking about mm -hmm. more than, yeah, because they, they got all kind of, I mean, pavers and this and that, and there's right. lots of them, not just a few. Guy drive his pickup truck back there and fill up. How many pickup trucks are there in North Reading today that mm -hmm. they should just be cars, but they never use them there's a lot of pickup trucks so so yeah it just, has a pickup so <laughs> I'm just you don't have a pickup truck there but there you go <laughs> Ward does i can't just go and throw stuff in the back Ward's of mine it's stuff in the back of mine <laughs> i just walk over there with front and low <laughs> why don't i attach a copy of the decision with there were a couple of conditions and fencing was one of them i don't remember what the other right, ones were but right. i can just attach a copy yeah, the owner was trying to get away with like saying you know, fencing because it's already buffering there but it wasn't for buffering it was for security, security. Yeah. and keeping keeping stuff people away from it and the stuff from kids too you know, they just see kids in there okay. <clears throat> That's it. So the next is Danielle. Um, minutes. Oh, we have minutes still. Oh, minutes. Oh, minutes. Yeah, we got a set of minutes. Mr. Redloff. Can we make a motion? Please. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the CPC accept the meeting minutes dated September 20th, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four in favor, and Ryan is absent. Okay. You're all set. <laughs> Great. Um, no, this, you know, planning administrator, you. Just a couple updates. Our next meeting, the 18th, we will have the consultant coming in who did the corridor study for Route 28. I had been hoping that I'd be able to have a little bit more of a conversation with the town engineer, but of course, as you know, he's not here anymore. Um, so the consultant said they would just come in, talk to us about what they did, what they looked at, what the various options are for Route 28. Um, so we'll, we can have that discussion at the next meeting. I um, thought we would devote like good 45 minutes to that to kind of talk through All right. that, um, that same meeting we also have a public hearing for um, the uh, for Mr. Wheeler's project 148 150 Park Street so that will be that will is, be is that uh, that's a special permit it's a special permit under the new zoning in that new senior housing overlay district so so we need four members yes is it going to be a uh, it's going to be on Zoom also. So I can just hybrid. keep posting these as hybrid. It sounds okay. like that is a just in case convenience that we don't know like where you're going to be. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I'm down with the final week, so yeah, I'm yeah, on. that's 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 kind of why. Well, we also, talked, like you don't need to. You were you were one of anything. our discussion <laughs> points the other day. It wasn't you actually? It was your wife? Yeah. Right. So I figured we, we we talked about just continuing to post all of our meetings as hybrid for yeah. the next. Yeah. You know. I'm amazed how many are still in other towns. 
they're 100 percent still zoom. zoom well that's yeah, what the cba is doing right they came out of covert lately i mean the, yeah. the, the, but you know i mean we expected it in the fall for there to be an increase because of the flu in covert but there's actually there has been mm -hmm. oh we're back one hand's back at a mask mandate for employees yeah. Started yesterday. Really? Uh, Monday. Yeah. 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 yeah that, today's Tuesday. Yeah. Because oh. I walked in there and one of the the women behind the counter says, "Chris, what's your mask?" And my son, who's on the other side, says, "He's on a day off today. He's a customer." Mm -hmm. she, so she stopped because I, I was and I but I didn't know about it. Yeah, a lot of the things I'm doing, I'm doing that moving <laughs> stuff and everything, and they they every time you go inside a building, you got a mask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. And they, they relaxed that for a while, then they brought it back. So, well, we had one a month ago. See, like, we had one a month ago and they dropped it. Then I got COVID, but I didn't infect all these people and I didn't get it from work. I got it from a friend um, out of work. And the gift that keeps on giving. That's right. right. <laughs> so, two and a half weeks later, there's another break, outbreak, but it was with all the people that interface directly with the public. So. That's about all I have. All right. Busy. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Uh oh. Uh oh. She needs some oh, signatures. Yes. Oh, you know, I did want to ask you a couple uh -oh. of scheduling questions. Um, you, you know, stuff. you guys can sign these yeah. first, and then I'll, I'll get to it. Um, sign the date. Let me see. Debbie, you just gotta call me. I can come in on usually on Thursday afternoon. It's not a big deal because I send them in. I just send them when you sign. I send them all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh uh, no, you know what? We're okay on scheduling stuff. I will update you. I if you are interested in attending any more of these, there's going to be a series of workshops. I will be going to most of them over the next two months. They're mostly Mondays and Tuesdays. There's the occasional Wednesday. <coughs> some of them are intended for residents. Some of them are intended for business owners some of them it should be interesting it should be i'd I'll be feedback. interested in, on the, the more resident type yeah i don't know if they're so where where's are they having like kitties or kind of thing like that or is it just here um there various places i think some of that I stuff will paid be attention on that slide oh right? no so what did it well, it's okay it'll be changing yeah. um the community room the library is one location for yeah. some of these um <laughs> the distance learning lab high school um one is going to be at the little school on the 18th that's for residents about our res abutting residents um I'm surprised though with the turnout at, 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 i don't know okay, at the, at the, turn of the <laughs> town meeting mm -hmm. it, you wonder how many people are really paying attention and hopefully the more notice of like you give them this many opportunities you hope yeah they're going to pay attention if you just have one or two. No, I think people will start to come because I mean we're gonna start to get closer and closer to the yeah. questions of what will it cost an individual homeowner and people will yeah. want to know that. So um, anyway. Yeah. That's good. Hey. We're been working really hard on it. Oh, um, now you now you can sign on the on the left. Oh, and the Economic Development Committee will be having another yeah, business say, event. It looks like November 9th is the date um, at the Hillview. We're waiting for things to be finalized, but that should be the night. I'll let you know once it's finalized. You've got a lot of stuff, huh? There's four. Leo, got to keep Miss Debbie happy, you know. <laughs> Don't want to get on her bad mm -hmm. side because you're totally in trouble then. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? <laughs> she make things difficult for you? No. Yeah, I, she can. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what I'm going to be at the town meeting and just get up. Uh, is that all? Is that that's, that's all? That's I'll it. something just for the fun of it.